Okay, so what I want to do is show you how you can take a web page and apply a background graphic to it. So we're going to take this particular page I did for my bio assignment, and we're going to take a background image and apply it like we did on this page here. I did this for another class. And I'll show you how you can play around with the positioning of the graphics. And the goal here is that we should be able to resize this page, and on pretty much any given size, the text will not overlap the the, the detailed part of the image. Okay, So in order to do that particular assignment, I started by finding an image I could put on there. And this is the actual image I ended up using. Um, so I should point out a couple of things. Number one, it took me a while to find an image. Number two, once I found it, um, I needed to clean it up so that I could put it on my page and make sure it didn't really, it was kind of a seamless page where it's hard to tell where the image ends and my and just regular background color begins. So if you look real closely at my image, this is what I did. Um, I created a two layer image. Okay, on the bottom layer, I filled it with a color. I pulled the color right out of the original image. And I filled it with that color. And so if you look over on the left hand side, that's the color we're looking at. If I were to hide this, you would see the cactus go away, but it still is that same color. So what I did is the cactus actually was sky, and if I go over here, this is the layer mask. I used the layer mask to do this. Now you can edit images any way you want, but I like the idea of having it fade to a color and then using that as the background color of the page. So on the image mask, you can see what I did is I went from um, being able to fully see the image to not being able to see it at all. Now I'm going to disable that layer mask so you can see what the image looked like. There really wasn't a lot of detail there in the be to begin with. And so the only difference I did was I got my eyedropper, I grabbed the color off the page, and then, um, actually I did it over here, grabbed the color off the page, and then that particular color, I filled the layer underneath it. When I did that, okay, and let me do this, I'm going to hide it just to show you that color. Um, the color code itself I got right out of Photoshop. So the first thing I'm going to do is change that background color on my original page. So the original page I had um, was this right here, uh, Life and Times of Your Web Design Teacher. I had some code in there. And so before I do anything else, I'm going to change the background color of the body to match that image before I forget. So that goal there is so that I could have this be the background color of the page. I could put the image in and know that even if this image ends, we'll still see the same exact color on the left. And of course, this graphic is positioned on the right-hand side, as you saw on my original page here. So we positioned it on the right. Now let's go back to the other one, the one we're actually working on. If I hit refresh, we can still see the colors. Everything's still, for the most part, readable. I might want to adjust this text here, but for now, I'm going to leave it. Because my goal is not really to worry about that. My goal is to make it so that um, my text doesn't get in the way of the image. In order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to put all the tags into another tag called a div tag, a division tag. So all of these tags are going to go inside. So I'm just going to tab them over so we can see that. The other thing is I'm going to take word wrap off so you can see closer where the body begins and where it ends. And the key here, of course, is you create a div. You give it a class. And whatever you give it the class, just remember it. I'm going to call it page. And then on line 49, right before I close the body, I'm going to close the div. So it's essential for this technique to work that you surround everything in a div. And then the, the idea of adding a class is a way that we can target this particular div. Okay. So that's the first thing we want to do. Once we have that, it, you won't see a change at this point. It just looks normal when I hit refresh. But if I can add a margin to that div, and I'm going to do that right now. So I put div. No, not div, excuse me. I put page. Notice dot is for a class. So anything with the class of page. And then we're just going to put a, a margin right. So we want a right-hand margin. We're going to get margin right. And as I said, it's about 375 pixels. So I'll go ahead and give it a 375 pixel. Save my changes. And then we'll take a look at the page. And at this point, we know that we've set it because look at the background of our headers now it gets stopped right there. So now all I do is place that graphic on the right. So once we have our image in Photoshop and we're ready to go, we're going to export it. The other thing you might want to do is you might want to modify the image itself, make it a little smaller, 
um, and, then, and you can adjust that at any point. I'm just going to keep it like it is because I want to show you how I do the CSS for that. So I'm going to go ahead and save for web and devices and make it a JPEG. Now one of the things I did on here is I created a folder in my student folder for all my CSS stuff. And um, if I were to do all uh, HTML and images, you would see that there's the background image. That's the page I'm working on. And you'll note I'm going to save my background image into the images folder. And I'm calling it the BG project. Uh, and this is not .html. We need to change it to images. So we have it saved here, BG project.jpg. I'm actually going to copy, copy that so I remember the name of the file. I click Save. And now it's saved. So the next thing we want to do is add our background image. In order to add a background image, you want to add it to the body so it goes behind everything. So after background color, we're just going to spell out background image. And we need to say the location. So we use the URL proper, the URL um, um, value. That will let us target where this image comes from. We're going to put it in quotes. So I like single quotes. And we use a relative link. We know that our background image ha is in a folder that holds another folder called images. So that's where we stuck the image. So we put images slash. And then I'm going to paste what I copied, which is bgproject.jpg. I copied it because then I want to make sure I got the exact link. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then let's take a look at the page now. When I hit refresh, I should see that graphic. And there it is. Interesting, low. Uh, look at that graphic. It kind of stops here. If I were to zoom out far enough, you would see that that image is actually tiling. So the next thing I want to do is add a few different properties to set how it displays. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is I don't want that thing to repeat at all, so I'm going to change the background repeat. So I only want it to appear one time, so I'm going to put no repeat. Save my changes. When I go back to the page and I hit refresh, if I can find it, it's hard to tell that anything's happened, but when I zoom out, you can see that there's only one image there. Now, of course, on, on, the, on the background repeat, we've, we could do no repeat, we could do repeat Y, repeat X. I've gone over that in other tutorials, but just um, if you were to do a repeat X or Y, you just write repeat X, repeat Y. So you may find that you want to do the repeat Y, and the reason why you would do that is if you have some kind of an image that, that scrolls its way down the page, and you want it to appear multiple times as you scroll down, that would be one way you could do it. Okay, but like I said, I don't want mine to repeat, so I'll put no repeat. Okay, um, now there's, two, there's a couple other styles we should be aware of related to background. One of them is background um, uh, position. So if we look at the position of our background graphic, let's go back to normal view. My graphic is not on the far right. I want it on the far right. So what I can do here is I can put right. And let's see if that works with one value. And it does. By moving it to the right, it put it on the right-hand side. You see that? Um, the other thing, too, is you can also give it top, middle, bottom, I believe. So we do a right top, and we hit refresh. See how it moved down a little bit? It's because it's a taller image. If I put right bottom, and I save my changes, now the bottom of my image is at the bottom of the page. Okay. And you see how it kind of scrolls, but the top gets cut off. So it's up to you how you want to do that. Um, the way I like to do it is if I want it on the far right, I use right. And, that's, and that looks good because I cut my image to, to display that way. But on the next value, I could give it a special value. If I wanted to do it at the top, I could put zero. And then it should be at the very top of the page there and so if we want to pull this cactus up we should give it a negative value so if i put negative 100 px now notice we start with the left to right then we do top to bottom so this is top to bottom if we give it a negative value that will move the image up the page see that it went up 100 pixels 
and we can make it up about 150. Hit refresh, and there we go. Now, if I scroll, you'll see that my cactus scrolls with the scroll bar. That has to do with background attachment. If you don't want your background image to scroll, you use background attachment. And if you put fixed, it will not scroll. So now take a look when I scroll up and down. Hold on, I gotta hit refresh first. If I scroll down, my image stays in the same location. My text scrolls, but the rest does not. So the last thing I wanna go over is it. So that covers some of these. There's another one you can try, which is background cover, I believe it is. Or I think it's background size, excuse me. If you do a background size of cover, it should basically get your picture to scale to fit the size of it. Um, did I save my changes? Yes, I did. And now yeah, it didn't quite work the way I thought it would. It might have something to do with the position and attachment. I'll take a look at it and let you know. So I did a quick little research and I found out if you do background cover, it says it scales the background image to be as large as possible so that the background area is completely covered by the image. And then it says some parts may not be in view. And that's why that, that happened. I thought maybe it would fit, but that's okay. Um, we can try contain and see what happens there. Uh, we'll see if that looks any different. Save our changes. Go back to the page if I could find it. Hit refresh. And, you know, the problem with the contain is, yeah, it kind of fit on there, but uh, I had a background position that gave it at 150. Let's put it at zero and see if everything works. Now we see the whole image, but let's see what happens when I move my image. Interesting, so that works. So contain makes it so that it fits. Um, I actually kind of like that. So, but you, you've got an option as to what you can do. You've got a lot of different ways to do it. Now you'll notice when I put a background size of contain, my margin is way bigger than it needs to be. So you figure out how you want to display the background image using a variety of these techniques. Once you have it positioned the way you like it, if you use background size, which is totally optional, okay, then you can adjust the margin right to make it fit. So maybe I'll try 275, um, go back to the page, hit refresh, and I could probably even go down to like 200 and get it to work. So I'm gonna leave the video at this stage here and um, just see how it works, yep. And the goal here is that I should be able to resize this image and not have the text be in conflict.